Welcome back to Hand Grenaded Black Franklin Hawaiian Grouse Part 2. One thing um, I do, I'm just going to jump right in here because I'm all stressed out today. A good idea is always shake your bird, like your booty. The reason for shaking your bird is it helps to line back your feathers, helps to shake them back in place, believe it or not. Um, now remember I told you I carved a little head? What I'm going to do is put a little dip of my secret glue right here. Try not to get any on the feathers, which with me, good luck about that. Better make sure my hands are clean. Make sure we put it in right side down. So I'm going to carefully lift up my neck here reason to put a little glue in is so that this thing will slide up the neck in the place hopefully without pulling out all these feathers that it's doing. I'm going to work it up. It's actually going slowly. It's being really, really... Oh, no, the feathers are coming out. Damn it. This thing was in such pin feathers. It's terrible. I'm going to have to try something else. Just trying, trying not to touch it. I'm going to have to touch it. So in this case, we got to do whatever we got to do to get this in here. So I'm going to open the mouth, put a little glue down the mouth. to wash the head again of all things. When we're done, just gonna wipe this glue off. You're gonna see I'm gonna do this in a second here. It's gonna make sense. Get my water bucket. Wash the glue off my hands. I'll close this and work this glue down the neck to the head which is right here there it goes see it going we did it okay as the head's in we only lost all the important feathers one way you can hide that if you're losing like feathers around the head and neck area is to sink the neck down a little further now we're going to take our body. Like, can you get in close here, Jeff, so they can see these pin feathers, what a pin feather is? These feathers are pins, they're little tubes that the feathers grow out of. And they're not fully grown feathers, and they just let loose when you uh, skin your bird. It's kind of like when you have an early bear and they flesh it. And the fleshing wheel pulls all the, uh, the hair through to the skin side. Now what I'm doing now is carefully putting my wire up there. I'm going to try to find my original hole, which is probably hopeless. So I'm just going to make a new one. Okay. Come up through the top of the head with my wire. I'm, I'm just really taking my time on this piece and uh, trying not to manhandle it too much. 
set everything down as gently as I can. Now we're bringing that head and neck to that transition where we car uh, where we carved in the back or cut in the back of our head and our foam neck. Okay, we got it down. So now I can relax a minute. I've nixed the idea of making this like displaying because of the condition of everything. How rough the bird is. It wouldn't make a good full on displaying bird. So we're going to make it like an, a resting or nesting pair. Now I'm going to put my leg wires in. I take out the uh, the sinew out of the legs or the tendons so it makes a little room for the wire to go up through boy look at this man Jeff this is even blown up look at that whole legs got a hole right through it I'm telling you this guy ground sluice these things I hope he doesn't watch this I don't think so he's an old dude he says he doesn't have a computer but I'm telling you it looks like they came up on these things and wham. Okay, so we got it through. Now, instead of using tie, I just cheat. I use this, um, whatever you want to call it. Bailing wire. Bailing wire or artist piano wire. Not piano wire, but um, old picture hanging wire, whatever. It's a good idea to have all different sizes of wire mm -hmm. on this bench we have like different gauges from eight all the way up to like so thin you could almost sew with it what you have to do with the little bluebirds and stuff for the museums now I've wired that on and I'm testing it to make sure that it goes back and forth easy you notice I haven't put any um, filler in on my legs yet. So, like I said, we're going to add all that at the end. Tweezers and cotton. We're going to come up our second leg. Get it through and you can see how easily it slides through when the tendons aren't in there. I know there's guys that take out all the bones. There's guys that do this, guys that do that. You don't really need the leg bone, but it's kind of neat to lock it up against the body so your bird will, you know, you can use a little bit smaller wire and get a little more flexibility with your pose that way rather than uh, have no leg bones and have to use a heavier wire to get it to stand on its own. Just wrapping this real quick. So now we've got our legs wired. Now I'm going to take a minute again. Remember we put a back in there. You can already start to see their shape in it. And uh, do you want to look at it again? Is that what that was, signal? My elite cameraman signaled me something. Anyhow, now we're going to set our leg wires and I'm assuming that you know how to do it, but I'm going to tell you how to do it anyway, where to do it. It goes dead center, the middle of the body. I know it looks like they come way out on the back, but if you look at how a bird walks, it's got to go center. And, and then where you put it, you got a little flexibility depending on if you want it flying, uh, standing tall, squatting, you know. But this one I'm going to center right in the middle. Just going to push it through, make a loop, push it back. Now here's where you lock it in. You bring up your uh, bone right to your, uh, where did I get the pliers, Jeff? Oh, I know, I'm to tell. Yep. You bring it up to your body. And just do that. Grunt it tight. 
come over here put this one opposite and again you can see why I made sure the wire slid through the leg easy because that way you don't want to like rip off your outer leg skin or nothing the scales I mean have done that okay we've got that done now what we're gonna do is pull around our tail Boy, man, this is, you know if you ever really want to punish yourself get a bird that's irreplaceable like this bird from Hawaii have them shoot it from five feet away and then film a tip you know because you know so now I'm gonna set our tail and again I always say you always hear me say I never throw nothing away a little scrap of wire make me a little tail staple in a perfect world you could grind a nice sharp point on this so it'll go in easy faster but hey why not just make it hard like the rest of this so I'm gonna cut me a little cut this at an angle and it's not even cutting at an angle where's the crap and dikes oh crap now I broke my water okay there we go get the good ones hey Patrick if you want to know where your dikes are you left them at my house okay. thank you for the good German dikes. Okay, now I'm coming in in the tail meat where the tail feathers are. I'm putting this. There we go. All right. Now that's set. Oops. Basically, now taking the legs, kind of getting them where they're going to go. Now here comes the magic fill part. Oh. You get this stuff? We got ours at a yard sale, but you get it wherever you get it. Get a pair of tweezers. I'm going to come in, put a little fill in the leg here, make my drumstick. And you don't need a lot, you just need it to poof the shape out a little bit. So you don't need to get all fancy like people do and make it look, I mean it looks pretty I guess. You know because basically you always want to make the inside mimic you know back to what it was but in the case of a bird it's not really necessary now I want to check my back it's a little flat so I'm gonna stick some of this stuff up in here see that now we got a nice arc on it. And this thing has a big tear right here, so boy, it's got a tear over here too. I'm gonna put a little bit. Back of our neck junction. Neck and body junction. And then we're going to put some in for the crop, too. So we've got a nice plump bird. But before I do that, since it's torn, I'm going to have to sew it up a little bit. And I don't like the fill to get in the way when I'm sewing. So if I put it in first, it just keep 
falling out. This needle is a little too sharp for this, but it's what I got today. You can see here where the rip is. A lot of times when you clean these really good, your birds, um, the feathers, tracks, make little perforations like on the old fashioned postage stamps. And it's easy for them to tear. Oh, thanks, Jeff. On the line. Normally, when I sew a bird, I go from the vent to the brisket so that the feathers um, come back like uh, shingles and you don't trap them. If you do, it traps the right way, but in this case here, we can't do that because of. Uh, because of the rip. Again, I'm sorry for being quiet. I know I should keep talking through this, but this whole thing is really high stress deal. You get your bird clean enough to mount so it won't get any leaks or nothing and then it tears on you. So, gaining on it little by little. Cut this out. Forgot to tell you, the smoother you wrap your bird, you won't get little hangers, I call them. Forgot to unplug the phone again, but that's just every day in a shop. Oh, dude! I wonder if that pink-haired guy watches this. He's gonna laugh at me with all his uh, Mr. Winter Winter Chicken Dinner. That guy, because he's a bird guy. I'm not a bird guy. I'm a game head guy. Yeah, you get cured of doing birds when Fish and Wildlife kicks down your door at 8 in the morning on a bogus deal. And you end up in a jail cell in downtown L.A. with uh, actual real murderers and uh, money launderers and drug dealers. and Well, you know, I'm never going to get over that. But they always got room in jail for the law abiding citizen. That way they keep us all scared straight, right? Here I am getting political again, Jeff. Not supposed to do that. Hopefully you guys can see this bird coming together. I made this string long enough that if it this goes together right I can go all the way down on the uh, should call this Frankenbird on the seam to the vent and just touch it one time and get it sewed up. There. I think I'm past it enough to put a little Sounds like a crock. It is a crock. You know, you know what the other one else, they use latex cock. And they pump it in in uh, syringes and stuff. There we go. We could see that plump that up right there. So, uh, but you know something? Wonder what you do on a bird like this that was, geez, how many holes were in this, Jeff? 15, 20, 25? There's too many to... Keep you count. Need to even count. 
with a bird that thin a skin it's more like a membrane than skin this one is yeah you can see how thin it is just it's not like a pheasant which is more of a what I call a bread and butter bird they're pretty eat tough they're pretty resilient you know in fact the string is stronger than the skin on this you know you just need to pull it together if you suck it up really tight it's just going to pull a string right through the skin which is another reason you don't want your body overbuilt try not to do what I just did pull it through the feather we're going to have to give this duck a blow I mean duck whatever this thing is grouse and we're gonna have to blow it off again put the the blower blow the feathers out um, get them fluffed up when we're done so that'll re-straighten re-straighten them anyway the last thing I'm gonna do when I get down here is towards the end is put a couple I put the uh, drumsticks in but I didn't make any thighs so I'm going to put a little bit of fill on each side 